that took place some days ago. It's a message, written in the language of burnt rubber. Okay, so... I went back quite a bit and I got the gloves from the gardener. I was going to just go straight to the dead body this time, but I decided to try this again and it actually worked. So sorry for the abrupt start. Uh, let's see. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there, and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Before heading south, must have been in a hurry. Hmm. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the roundabout, I would keep them separate. You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they went. If you find the time. Nope, we're gonna stay focused. We're gonna stay focused. And, uh, let's go ahead and look at this again, because I don't know if it's going to be important. Dead body. Hmm. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in, even through your clenched nostrils. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? It's a... Uh, dead body. Active decay. It's okay to throw up, Officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! Hmm... If I fail this, um, legendary? No fucking way. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. All right, I'm gonna look around a bit, just a bit. Um, to see if there's anything else around here. Hmm. Oh. Why is it strange? We'll get back to that later. Kuno's got this! If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, <laughs> then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh yeah, Nappa Goofy Kuno! Who? Hey kid, a word, police business. A moment of your time, please. I'm not getting into this right now. Love it in the dick. Wait. Huh. What word is that? The boy is sweating profusely. 
His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Hmm. Hold on, what does that mean? Stop throwing rocks in my crime scene? Stop using slurs in my crime scene. That's not how we do it. What does that mean? The kid is obviously high. Oh. Stop getting high at my crime scene. <laughs> Hits himself. Oh wait, hang on. Are they brother and sister? Kuno and Kuno... Kuno S? Ku... Eh? The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. What? So you do know what a rake is. You know it's something a gardener uses. Ben, what should we do? Are you kids siblings? Kid, you want to hang out? I'm not an arc. I have questions for you. We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. No forces? You will see. What? The language these kids are using. Pure, unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. The fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f***ers, Kuno! Uh, what? Fuck no, Kuno doesn't buy that shit. Fucking entrapment shit. Fast. This kid has got street smarts. Hmm. All right. Entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. Hmm. Shitload pig, what's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. Kuno's fuck him. Kuno uses the fuck him for target practice. I'm sorry. He's allowed to say fuck gimp. But... The other word is censored. I don't know, maybe because it's a slur, but it doesn't really make sense. I don't know. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Am I going to get in trouble for saying fuck gimp? The game said it first. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make the Kuno sing into the popo phone. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking... Mm. Mesk or, or... I don't know. Some other place? Night City? Kuno was in fucking Night City. Oh, you played Cyberpunk too. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. You're getting close. Kuno gives this info out on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. Kuno didn't smoke the gimp, if that's what you meant. I doubt you did, kid. Thanks, Kuno. That's one name you can now cross off the list. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! Wait, is that what they were saying before? Eh? Also, can I... Does it matter if I go back to these questions and pick answers that I didn't Probably pick last fine. time? Kuno was... You had Kuno? I don't know. Mesk or... Okay, yeah, so I'm no stuck with them. Anywhere. That sounds like oh, the never mind. City in some pulp science fiction novel. Hmm. Yeah, Kuno didn't smoke him if that's what you mean. Yeah, whatever. Thanks, Kuno. That's one name you can now cross off the list. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Yeah. Get lost, How come it's not sent... What? Huh? It... 
that's the word that was whatever. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. What do you want with it? Hmm. Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. Of what necessarily? It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Whoa, what the hell happened? Uh... Huh? Sorry, the screen changed drastically, but I was... I was looking away for a second. I just noticed there was a change in my peripheral vision. It's not snowing anymore. But did it already stop snowing? I don't know. Don't know. Kip that's gardener used to work there. Kip is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. Yeah, her. <laughs> What was she doing in the greenhouse in March, anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Hmm... The fact that this isn't grayed out... The fuck about it? Okay. Your test... Get lost! Yeah? The kingdom of Kuno? The fuck do you want with it? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's Kuno, pig? It's always Kuno. Never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. I noticed. Let's see. The fuck are you calling a third person? Kuno's the fucking first person. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you. He's gonna put his hands on you. Hmm. <laughs> They're not even referred to as human beings. The thing behind the fence starts squealing. <laughs> Oh my god! Help! He's got the Kuno help! Jesus Christ! You need to get the hell out of here before. Yeah? Get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you. Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. <gasps> no, hang on. <laughs> got fucked by the Kuno. We alright. You wanna get fucked again? Come back. Whew. Okay, so... Alright. I didn't... I still didn't see anything in the inventory. So I was just looking at... Hmm. But like... How do I know how many I have? Hang on. Sorry, I'm pressing L3 and R3 just to see... But it doesn't look like that's doing anything yet. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to twelve pairs have walked here. Also, sorry, I was not. I had to leave that conversation. All right, I I was not about to get caught up in that situation. Hmm, fifty-eight percent. Heavy workers' boots with reinforced toes and hobnails all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Not it. Ah, uh, they didn't help. Maybe more than twelve. Yeah. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 46. Two, standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 44. Three, 
Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 43. 4. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. I agree. The cold must have preserved them. 5. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. 6. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot, but number 41. Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. <laughs> I'm pretty good at this, ain't I? You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it. And the tracks burn in the middle of it. In a strange, beautiful way. I agree. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Eight. And yet another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Okay, I was about to say, because wasn't there... Yeah, another 44. Okay, so the numbers are the make of the boots. I guess. How many? 400 million. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Hmm... A woman or a kid? Damn it, I don't wanna be solid here. Understood. Anything else? Two hundred? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Yeah. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. Yeah, because let's be real. We're not in America. These aren't pounds. It's kilograms. No fucking way. That's just one person. Well, I mean, eh, yeah, no, no way. By the way, why the fuck does America have to be the only place that uses pounds instead of kilograms? It's really weird. Actually, no, we're not the only place that does it. Uh... Damn it. It's like... I think there are two, three other places outside of the US who does the same metric system. But except for that, everybody else is doing their own thing. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. <laughs> Maybe he was a giant? It could have been an extremely obese person. They would have to be extremely obese. Possibly, yes. But why? Yes, they could have used the makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. Hmm. Even easier to carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else can you see? Yeah, most likely the first option. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? <laughs> a drummer? That's stupid. Oh my goodness. Hmm. So wait. Who knows, that might not be all that stupid. <laughs> no, it's not. Forget I said it. We are not looking for drama. Okay, so you were just joking. <laughs> Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Hmm. Get picking up on that. Interesting. If only I had come up with that idea. 
I was actually thinking the exact same thing. I totally wasn't. Not thoughtfully. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? <laughs> yes, prudent. I'm not sure. We don't want to attract too much attention. Hmm. Mm hmm. A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashoi. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. This is easy. <laughs> The lieutenant's eyes narrow. He's thinking to himself. Either way. What else? Hmm. Anything else? Let's talk to the creature. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. What, you mean kill you? Maybe. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? <laughs> Child, converse with me. I come from the woods, Kutavitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. Don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here. Let's talk to her again. I'll die before I squeal, pig. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, beast. You got done. Talk to me. So it's a girl. Interesting. Yeah, it's a girl. <laughs> Come on, even I could tell that. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Child, converse with me. Murder was the case, was the case they gave me. Hmm? I know we're not gonna I'll go anywhere with her. Like, trying to talk to her. I still want to go through these. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. Cool. Uh, good talk. Fuck, does Kuno care? Oh. Oh. So I get less because I back down, but I get one more because I talk to her. You may retry it. Bro, no way. It might kill me again, and I don't know how much shit I have on me. I can't risk it. I think I only have the one thing. How come I'm not- Jesus. I wasn't moving for like a good few seconds. Um... I guess we can talk to the gardener. 
there he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely... The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Ah. Damn it. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. Ugh, that's the worst. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. Ah, <gasps> not the shish kebab. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Oh, thank you. Why are you so nice? The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. You think that would help? Um... If you can handle the headache, some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. Hmm. Oh. Wait, so... Yeah, because we didn't even try to examine the body yet, which was mentioned earlier, which is why I keep trying to check it out. Um, maybe if I go to the drugstore, get some ammonia, I can inspect the body. I can't handle the headache. It's more likely he can handle the smell, unlike you. There is Frit nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't... There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Hmm. Pretty clever. Right. I dig the competence. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Hmm. Well, I guess first thing we can try is the store. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. I am the law. <laughs> I know, sir. Interested in a new and exciting book? Yes. It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, little girl. <laughs> what is a book? <laughs> that is a book. They have stories inside them. It's like someone told you a story in a really long letter. Pretty much, yeah. A postcard is a small cardboard picture. You can write a few words on the other side and send it to your friend or beloved. I don't think I have a beloved anymore. Board games are like little games on a table, made to pass the time. There are several different ones, but sailors here mostly buy cards. My pleasure. Anything else you'd like to know? Man, how do I keep, how do I get experience for things? It seems to happen. It's kind of hard to tell what would give you experience, you know? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register or organizing the stock. 
Feel free to step in and browse our wares. Oh. You're like, um... The person wearing the mascot outfit twirling the sign in front of a business. Is that why you're just standing outside doing nothing? Aw, and it's cold out here too. I'm signaling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I could help by brutally dismantling the free market. My god. Hmm. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to help Mum out with the store. That's fine. She doesn't need to understand what I said. Oh. Should she be at school? Yeah, because I don't know what day of the week it is. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Um... Mum says it's necessary to do both, because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. You succeed. Well, I mean, as long as you're getting... some schooling... I mean, it's... I'll be honest. How important is schooling in this area? I'm not sure. Like, one chick had to go away to a completely different place to go to maybe college. I mean, this girl could still leave to go to college. And I mean, yeah, sucks to not have a proper teacher, but it does sound like she is doing some studies. Maybe they can't afford school. I don't know. There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Hmm. Mom says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Oh, this is a house? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Exactly, but we've been doing fine so far. <laughs> that sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. Um, I would say this, but would it worry her? Hmm. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case, but I don't see much more to look into here. Yes, please do look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games you asked about are also there, sir. Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. But Kim... The plasmic manifestations. No such thing. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. What is this crime business? <laughs> crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Wait, not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is. Oh my god. Why would anyone want to read about crime? Hey man, it can be a good read. I mean, if you're reading a good one. Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. And it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. Again, if it's a good one... Um... Hmm... This is going to be kind of uh, random. And it's also not even a book? One reason I stopped watching that anime... Uh... It's basically... 
A side story for Fate Zero focuses on one of the characters that was in Fate Zero, but I think it's like, I don't know, it's however many years later, so he's all grown up and he fine and everything. And it's basically supernatural, magical, detecty stuff, basically. And you know, it's fine and everything, but part of the fun of reading or watching a detecty show is having seeing the same clues as the detective and trying to figure it out along with them. If you get it right, then you can be like, ah, yeah, I got it right. And even if you're wrong, if it makes sense, then you can be like pleasantly surprised, like, oh, that was pretty smart. Yeah, I stopped watching the show because you can't really follow along with it. Like when you get to the end of the episode and you find out who did what, it's kind of, um, like the character finds out with information that you didn't have. So you can't possibly follow along with it. So yeah, I believe it's called something something Melioi the second or the third or fucking whatever. If you know what Fate Zero is, you probably know what I'm talking about. But anyways. You don't look much like a policeman. I didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, oh no, I'm sir. not offended. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. I used to be exactly like that Mullen guy. Then I decided to live a little. AKA <laughs> do drugs. You know, nobody actually looks like the guy in the picture. That's just a stupid fantasy of a man. Oh, hang on. It's not your body that's important in police work anyway. It's your... Tap, tap. Wow, look at the guy. I'll never be as good as Mullen. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. Head, yes. No, your mind. Not head, child. Heads. <laughs> Come on, that's, let's not shit on Mullen. Isn't that very dangerous? Policemen live and breathe danger, little girl. Mullen obviously lacks the... Listen, I get... What? Chameleonic. Sorry. Chameleon. Chamele... Oh my fucking Christ. Cham... Ugh! Unlike you, sir. He's just a fictional character. He's no match for you. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the books. The cover image of Dick Mullen seems to stare at you with harsh disapproval. What is romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. Come on, spell a lot more than that. Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. What about when both of the men are bad? Now that is what you call a thriller. Either that or people who don't know better call it romance when really it's toxic and it's terrifying. What about when everyone is poor? Then it's just a normal romance. <laughs> what about a book where the man and lady business doesn't work out at all? That's enough romance for me. I mean, in all honesty, number four can still be an interesting... Isn't that how Scum's Wish ended? Not the manga, the anime. I'm pretty sure it ends and they don't... I could be remembering wrong. Also, really sorry for spoiling Scum's Wish, I guess. It happens. Usually the guy gets rich in the process, or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly, like during the revolution or something. 
Mm-hmm, I see. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. I mean, yeah, if it's a thriller. I'm pretty sure I read a story once where there was romance in it. Uh, one guy was not great. And then the other one was an actual serial killer. An interesting read, but not exactly. I don't know. It had a romance in it. It just, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird. Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. You can make a proper romance story out of everyday life. Not every romance needs to be all fantastical and extra. Like, fuck. Where, what about all the poor people falling in love, huh? What about the poor people? <laughs> Although, romance can be like a form of escapism. Like any kind of media or any other kind of book, really. But I don't know, sometimes you want to read something that's more down to earth. Yeah, poor people are boring. Not really. You need to hang around more poor people. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. Not everyone's nice, and not everyone's pretty. I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. Hmm. I think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup. I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. No, no, think about it. One where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination. Only it's really long and drawn out. Scarred for life. Phantom limb. Um, no, I don't know. Does it ring a bell? All right, I'll ask your mom. Yes, she knows books. Definitely. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel stuck somewhere in your forebrain? Sounds like the story of my life, honestly. Uh, not my life personally. I've never been in love. I'm talking about this guy, Mr. Dubois. If that is his name. Maybe some of our other books? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I think that's why people read them, to find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Hmm. But it does make the famous people more famous. Yeah. Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. Ugh. Fame is for vain people. I have better things to do. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry. The, the immature childish ones. I can't resist. Annette's expression remains ever so helpful. But... She doesn't say anything. Never mind, I literally had nothing else to say. Okay. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to deduce something now. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? What do you mean, sir? My goodness. Um. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. 
She brings out her reddened hands, her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. Hmm. I thought she was wearing gloves, but I guess not. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? It's super simple for a detective such as myself. Well, that proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. Hmm. She nods, half provocative, half enthusiastic. You're recycling your body material? My god. Rats? Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. I hope this entertained you. It was okay, sir. Hmm. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. That was a masterclass move. Whatever, kid. I don't need to prove myself to you. Huh. You're quite sober. The lieutenant does not flinch at the comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. Hmm. Wait, how do you know I'm usually not? And I'm having a grand time. I'm also sad and my head hurts. Wait, yeah. Let me ask this one. Have you seen me around? And if you have, what was I doing? Because you usually aren't. What is that clicking noise that I keep hearing? I'm sorry, sir. I hope things get better soon. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. Somehow, there's something you're missing. Oof. I know the law. You have I do not know the law. Familiar? How? You must have forgotten something you heard again. Ooh, that stutter when I autosave. Um, we can check this stuff out later. I still need to find the frickin' frackin'. Where's the general store? There's something down there. Hmm. Can't click on it again. Listen, I'll get to you guys later, but where the hell is... And now I'm back... Here... I still need to talk to you... Might as well, since I'm passing by. There's a tree in it. Oh, pawn shop. Okay, well, I can sell my crap here. Yeah, I know I have a few healing items. I don't know how much magnesium I have. Hmm. And I don't want to talk to you yet. I need to stay focused.
Come on. There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes, smelling of strangers' body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics, best retro designs. Save the economy with your style, officer. Save the economy? That sounds off. Hmm. Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Recycle your cash? Uh, okay. I mean, who knows? Their situation is probably like ours. Look around, officer. You see all these premium goods just sitting there, not getting bored. We've got to keep the flow of goods moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you want to want sell to shit, I get that. it. And you're using the whole saving the economy. Well, who knows? He could actually believe it. But he's definitely using it as a spiel to get his shit sold. Which, don't blame him. Make that money, I guess. Oh god, but I don't have children, I think. Do we have children? That's good, officer. That's exactly what the economy wants you to do. What? Whatever. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. Mm. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Why no money? Economical, but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Find something worth salvaging. Why do I need composure for that? Whatever. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says. But also, wind. Summer. 100% waterproof. And sport. All in different typefaces. Sounds like one hell of a windbreaker. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Is that how much money I have right there? 560? Oh, I can't. Come on. I'm pressing it. R2 and L2. I can't. Maybe it's because I'm in a conversation right now? Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash, keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy... Very cool. The economy thanks you, officer. Hmm. More composure, less shivers. I want to compare it to what I have now. But for some reason, I can't get to it. Hmm? I guess I can't look at it when I'm in a conversation. I mean, I still need to buy other shit. Wait, if it if it really costs that much, I can sell. Prepare for springtime, right? I can sell some of the stuff that I picked up. Although, sorry, I just now remembered a few of those things that I picked up before. I don't have them anymore because I went back to an old save. The 
is a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest styles right here. Hmm. Try it on. Rummage. Uh, let's rummage. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap Sirais plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. My god, you are rightly dubbed drama. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design, super material, very cool. UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Mm -hmm. No. Oh. All you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Lame. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. Bang, bang. <laughs> and all for a mere six real. I don't get that kind of money. Hey, at least it might actually offer some protection against the sun. Not like those cheap plastic shades. I hope not. <laughs> you don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. Let's get you some real shades. Oh, God. That's actually uglier than I imagined. Hmm. Oh, wait. The amphibian one is locked, too. I mean, it still looks like they'll let me buy it. Oh, wait. Duh. It's locked because I don't have any money. Well, what did you recommend? Abort. These are hideous. What's more? They don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer. You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and 50 cents. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. But can I still buy them, though? No, you are definitely not. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, Kim. Ah, Jesus. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. You should think this through, officer. Whoa. Shades of self-destruction. Wait, where? Amphibian. Oh, these are the ugly ones. Honestly, they look better than the amphibian one. Electrochemistry, but negative one logic. Hmm. I'll be back. Maybe. I need to find this damn store. Oh, wait. Is that it? Wild Pines? Uh, oh, no, wait. Mm -hmm. God, making me wish I had a map. Almost. Oh. Alright. See ya. I'll be back later. 
Yeah, definitely not supposed to be there yet. I think that's where the strike is happening. Also, I didn't read that sign, but that's okay. Pretty sure we'll be coming back later. Where the fuck is this store? 